Hello everyone, this is Balu. Welcome to my channel CVT. In this video, I am going to discuss about stress block parameters. First of all, let us understand what is this stress block. Before watching this video, please watch my previous video which is based on the stress strain curve of concrete and steel because it will help you understand the basics and also it will help you understand this video regarding stress block parameters. I have provided that video link in the description, go through it. And also first of all, what is this stress block means? You all know the stress strain curve of concrete. I am just showing you the rough diagram of stress strain curve of concrete. It is parabolic up to 0 0.002 strain and after that it is constant up to 0 0.0035 strain. Here you can see this is a 0 0.002 strain and also it is 0 0.0035 strain. This is stress and this is strain and corresponding design strength it is 0.45 FCK. If you take this curve and just place along the depth of the section then it is nothing but the stress block. If here you can see this is the parabolic portion and here also parabolic portion you can see and this is a constant region and here you can see the constant portion also. This is nothing but the stress block. This is for your basic understanding. Now let us enter into the actual video. I am just rubbing this one. Here you can see this is the neutral axis which is defined as NA and you can see the whatever the axis which is passing through the centroid of that section and also here you can see 0.45 FCB which is the design strength of the concrete and also C is the compression force which is acting on it and also 0.42 XU is the depth of the compression force from the top extreme fiber of that section and Z is the lever arm. Lever arm is which is a distance between the compression force and also tension force. And also here you can see the 0.43 XU which is the depth of this rectangular region. Here you can see which is a constant region up to certain depth and it is in rectangular shape. The depth up to which the stress diagram is rectangular portion is nothing but the 0.43 xu and remaining depth it is 0.57 xu and coming to d which is nothing but the depth of sorry effective depth effective depth is the distance from the topmost fiber of the section to the centroid of the ast provided means steel provided and here you can see the at the end of this rectangular portion you can see the strain value which is 0 0.002 Okay, if you observe the stress strain curve of concrete, it is very very clear. And at the topmost portion, it is 0 0.0035 strain. Okay. And also, I am going to derive this 0.42 xu, 0.43 xu. But before deriving, I am just want to show these values, like what are the exact location of these things. And also, I am just naming these things as k1 and h as a unknown parameters. And also here you can see xu is, is nothing but the depth of neutral axis. Okay. This is the labeling parts of the, the stress black parameters you can see. Now let us understand why this compression force is acting in the top portion and why this tension force is acting in the bottom portion. Here actually the AST is provided in the bottom portion and thereby this tension force is acting in the bottom portion. But what is the basic reason behind it is? For example, if you take an beam, this is a beam, for example, and if you are applying a load on it, and it undergo deflection in this pattern, and here you can see this is the neutral axis for the beam. Whatever the top portion, I am just shading this top portion. It is under compression. Those fibers are under compression. It is clearly visible. And the, whatever the bottom portion, it is clearly visible. Those portion is under tension. Okay. I am just shading for you. Hope you understand the difference. That's why these top fibers are com compressed and bottom fibers are under tension. 
that's why whatever the load coming on to the structure the stop portion takes that whole compressive force and bottom portion will takes all tension force that's why we provide steel bars in the bottom portion and whatever the load coming on it the top portion will take care of compression okay now let us derive this stress block parameters first of all let's find out the value of k1 and h in first step i am going to find out k1 comma h here you can see easily this is the similar triangle from similar triangles you can easily derive those k1 and h values i am just drawing for you this value is 0.002 and this value is 0.0035 and also this is k1 and this is h now let us find these values k1 and h from the similar triangles this total depth is xu from the similar triangles for example this is a bigger triangle and this one is a smaller triangle x u by h is equal to corresponding to the bigger triangle the ordinate is 0.0035 is equal to 0.0035 by 0.002 now you can get easily the value of h h is equal to you will get 0.57 x so then the k1 value is nothing but k1 is equal to x u minus 0.57 x u which is nothing but 0.43 x u okay you, we can we already found that k1 and h values now let's enter into the second step this now let us find the compression force value that is value of c compressive force nothing but c to find the compressive force the basic thing you have to remember is c is equal to compressive force is equal to area of stress diagram into width of the section that is b so for that we have to find the area of stress diagram now let us divide this area into two parts that is number 1 which is nothing but the rectangular portion and number 2 which is nothing but parabolic portion now let us find the area of rectangle and parabolic portion here you can see the rectangle the ordinates of rectangle is 0.45 fck which is the length and also width it is 0.43 xu and coming to the parabolic here you can see the ordinates as 0.57 xu and also 0.45 fck now let us find the area first of all area of the rectangle portion is nothing but width into length that is first of all a1 is the area of the rectangle portion and a2 is the parabolic portion into width area of the rectangle portion is width into length that means 0.45 fck into 0.43 xu plus area of parabolic region is nothing but 2 by 3rd of width into h so 2 by 3 into 0.45 fck into 0.57 xu into width if you calculate this region you will get 0.36 fck into xu 
okay this is the compressive force into width okay which is nothing but the compressive force c which i have already shown in this figure you can see this is the compressive force which is c okay and also we are going to find this 0.4 to xu that is at the depth at which the compressive force is going to act in the next thing this is the next thing we are going to find that is 0.4 to xu also and i have already shown the dimensions of the rectangle portion and parabolic portion you can see clearly you can see here it is 0.4 to xu and 0.4 fck is the dimensions of the rectangle portion and 0.57 xu and 0.45 xu are the dimensions of parabolic portion which i have used here if you have any doubt also you can comment in the comment section okay this is about compressive force next let us find the centroid of the stress block this compressive force is act going to act at the centroid of the stress block okay, that is i think what centroid let us name it as y bar or anything you all know the basic formula that is y bar is equal to a1 y1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2 what is a1 which is nothing but the area of rectangle portion then what is a2 which is nothing but the area of parabolic portion we have already divide, uh, derived the area of those portion let us use those things here and also we have to know about the y1 value which is the centroidal distance of rectangle portion and y2 is the centroidal distance of the parabolic portion for example this is the stress block for example this is the stress block and just drawing roughly and y1 is the centroidal distance of this rectangular portion and y2 is the centroidal distance of this parabolic region and i am considering this top fiber as origin and i am measuring this distance of the centroid for rectangle portion and parabolic portion which is termed as y1 and y2 let us find these values and coming to the a1 which is already we have defined that is 0.45 fck into 0.43 xu into y1 y1 is nothing but the half of the depth of this rectangle portion which is nothing but half of 0.43 xu this term is over which is nothing but a1 y1 okay this term is completed now now let us enter into the a2 y2 a2 is nothing but area of parabolic region which is nothing but we have already defined that is 2 by 3rd of 0.45 fck into 0.57 xu into what is the y2 value now we have to define y2 is nothing but 0.43 xu which is nothing but this value this is nothing but 0.43 x plus whatever the centroidal distance of this parabola which is nothing but the 3 by h of this total distance 
this this is nothing but 0.57 xu this 3 by 8 of this distance will give you the centroidal distance of this parabolic region but we are measuring from this origin so we have to add this 0.43 xu from this origin we have to measure the centroidal distance of parabolic region so 3 by 8 into 0.57 x and this is regarding the a2 y2 now a2 y2 also completed a1 y1 also completed and just divide this entire expression by total area that is 0.45 fck into 0.43 xu which is nothing but a1 plus 2 by third of 0.45 fck into 0.57 x this is a1 and this is a2 after dividing this entire expression you will get the y bar value which is nothing but 0.42 x Okay, this is about the centroidal distance. Hope you understand my explanation. And also, moment you are going to get by multiplying this compression force with lever arm or tension force with lever arm. You all know that tension force you can get by the that is tension T is equal to stress in the tension into area you will, will give the tension force that is 0.87 Fy is the design stress of steel into area of the steel available will give you the tension force that is AST. This is the best uh, basic expression that is 0.87 Fy units is nothing but Newton per mm square which is the design stress and AST is the mm square. If you multiply both you will get the Newton that is nothing but units of force. And compressive force which I already derived uh, that is 0.36 fck into bx and coming to the lever arm z is equal to d minus 0.42 xu. I will show you how this d minus the 0.42 xu came. Here you can see this is d and if you remove this 0.42 xu will give you the z value ok it is clearly visible in the figure if you remove 0.42 xu from the d it will give you z that is nothing but lever arm now whatever the m that is moment you are going to get by using the formula any of the formula that is 0.36 fck bxu into d minus 0.42 xu or 0.87 fy ast into d minus 0.42 xu which is the basic formula force into distance or perpendicular distance will give you the moment okay i have derived all the basic expressions which you have to keep in mind which is very very important while designing any cross section these formulas is going to help in the design of beams, slabs and all other things also. So thank you for watching this video and also I am going to design all the civil structures like water tank, retaining wall and all other things in the upcoming videos. If you like my way of explanation, please subscribe my channel and also click on the bell icon so that you can get the time to time updates.